Good evening, beautiful people, and welcome again to another one of our evening devotionals here at Orchard Hill Church. It is always a blessing to be together. I want to share a passage of scripture with you guys before we sing. And it's from Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. I have a wife and five children at home, so it's very easy for me to be overwhelmed with the things of the earth. Things like this coronavirus, of course, and governments shutting down, and even considering the possibility of needing to be able to provide without work for my family. But I'm also reminded of the word of God that tells us that we should set our heart and our minds on things above. The Word of God also tells us to watch and pray, so we should be wise in this time, but staying prayerful and focus our hearts and our minds on Him, who truly is our living hope. Let's worship together. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name Into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows Of my soul the work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless the God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful sin. I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain, the salvation. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Come on, hear these words again. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me Jesus yours is the victory 
is the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hey guys, good evening. Welcome to Orchard Hill. It's Josiah. Great to be together. I want to share with you as we dig into this evening's devotional in Psalm chapter 16, if there's any way that we can support you in prayer, any member of our ministry team is so eager to do that. We can pray with you at any point during this evening's time together. You can type that into a comment on Facebook or click on the button in the bottom right if you're on church online. Well, this evening, I, I do have the privilege of sharing with you some words from Psalm chapter 16, and I'm going to focus on just a few short verses here tonight. Listen to these words of David. Psalm chapter 16, verses 5 through 8. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. You know, I want to share with you a few nights ago, my wife and I were having a conversation talking about early times in our marriage. And I want, I want you to know, early in our marriage, Brittany and I had a season that we called our follow your dreams years. And in these years, we moved to Tennessee and I became a college track coach. And that was a dream that I had to be able to, to work with athletes. But it's funny, in following my dreams, I only made $6,000 a year. Not the full dream that I had anticipated. I guess I needed to aim a little bit higher. But that was a tough season for us. My wife was a school teacher by training, but when we moved to Tennessee, she didn't have her state licensure. And so for a time, she worked as a receptionist. She would leave that job. She'd go work at the mall in another role. And so we were working hard to make ends meet. But each, uh, each week when we wanted a special time together, what Brittany and I did to be able to enjoy a date night is we would scrounge up all the quarters we could find. We'd look in that dish where we kept our keys. Maybe we'd search under the car seats and we'd gather up enough quarters where we could go to McDonald's and get an ice cream cone just the two of us. And I have to tell you, maybe that story, it sounds romantic to you to hear it, but the reality that we live in now where we have a better financial situation, you know what? I'll take that over those romantic memories of scrounging up our quarters to get a McDonald's ice cream cone. That said, I have to tell you, if I could go back and relive any of our date nights, you know where I'd go. We'd be back at McDonald's. Oh, what a special uh, memory. What special memories those times together for us bring to mind. Because the fact of the matter is we didn't have much, but because we didn't have much, we were acutely aware of what we did have. And what we did have was time together. We had enjoyment of our relationship and being able to spend that time. And we had enough quarters to be able to get some tasty ice cream cones. We were so grateful for that. And you know, in this season, I think that for many of us, a lot of the things that we've looked to in our lives for, for our joy, for happiness, a sense of security, they've been, they've been stripped away. Maybe there's a less certain path before us. Some of the things that maybe distracted us in the past that kept us busy, things that we felt like we could look to for a sense of security or understanding of who we are, validation about our lives, some of those things have been taken away. And so really we're at a point right now of asking ourselves, where am I going to find joy? Where am I going to find security, blessing, that happiness that I so much long for? And I think this passage we're looking at tonight has some really profound words for us. When we look at David's statement here, it's really these, these words of truth, a statement of faith about where his blessing comes from. And what we see is that it's ultimately a relationship with God that gave David hope. He says in verse five, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. Think about that image. What David is saying here is that the way in which God has provided for him, it's completely abundant. There's no fear of a shortcoming. 
You know, I grew up in a family with four kids. I had two brothers, a sister. And I have to tell you, around the family dinner table at night, I would scarf down my dinner because I wanted to make sure I got seconds. There was always enough to go around, but with two brothers at the table, things can get competitive. And what David's words say to us here is we never have to be worried about God's blessing running out for us. Even in our times of fear, we can know that we are secure. David's words there. You are my portion in my cup. You make my lot secure. That's the level of comfort that you and I can have, knowing that God's blessing will never run dry for any one of us who has that security of knowing that we are in right relationship with him. The next image that David shares here, he says, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. You know, this is really an ancient Near Eastern cultural reference to property borders. What David is saying is, I look at my lot in life and I can see that I've drawn out a pretty good standard for myself. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. These, this standard, this ancient Near Eastern expression that is used to convey uh, the markings out of a property that someone would have for the, the land that they lived on. David looks at this this living that he has because of God's provision in his life. And he finds himself with deep comfort knowing, even in my most difficult moments, I'm really in a good place because I have the favor of God on my side through the relationship that I have with him. I'll take it even as I wait, even as I'm in this time of uncertainty. And then next in verses six through eight, After saying the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places, I have a delightful inheritance. I'll praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. And when David talks about his inheritance in the Lord, really, this is a statement of David saying, I know that this trust fund I've been given in God, it's never going to run dry. His blessing will never diminish. It will never cease to meet my every need. And the fact of the matter is that for any one of us who's a follower of Jesus Christ, we can live with that same level of confidence that God's provision in our lives will never run out. Because the fact of the matter is the whole foundation of our faith is the good news of how God has provided for us in the ultimate way in Jesus. When we look to David's words here, there are these words of assurance, comfort, security, and blessing for any one of us who has a relationship with God. And really what that comes down to is not us having it together, not us figuring out God, not us striving hard to be good enough people to merit his favor through our right behavior, right behavior through our moral efforts. What it's all about is coming to God and saying, I am completely in need. I'm totally reliant on you. I need your grace if I'm going to have a relationship with you, God. It's not about me lifting myself up, but what you've done to meet me in the midst of my brokenness. That's what the good news of the Christian faith is all about, that Jesus died on the cross, that our sin could die with him for each and every one of us who look to him in faith, that his new resurrection life would be what defines our own lives. That can be your hope. In this time, that can be your hope for all of eternity. If you will come to Jesus and say, God, I confess with my mouth, I am a broken person who needs your grace. I believe in my heart that what you have done on my behalf is more than enough. I find my hope in you. We can have that kind of assurance, each and every one of us, no matter what we experience in life. And so I want to apply this for you all in a really specific way here as we think about this current season. I know that there are some of us right now who are really in a tough spot. Maybe as you watch this stream, you're that person who's sitting in a a fast food parking lot, mooching off free Wi-Fi, and you're trying to find this last word of hope because you feel as if you're at the end of yourself. Maybe you're looking under your car seats and you can't even find enough quarters to go get an ice cream cone. Maybe that's where you are. The first thing I want to say to you is I've been there. I've been there and God's grace will be enough for you. He will provide for you. Look to him in faith. 
we're not saved by grace through faith and then we live this life on our own. Keep looking to Jesus in faith one day at a time. You can trust him to provide. He sees you. He is with you. This is an opportunity for you and I to get real. There are often times where we can make our faith about showing up to events or, or playing a part, going through, the, going through the motions. And that really doesn't do us any good at times like this. This is a moment for you and I to get real. Who do we trust? Let's put our hope in the Lord. He will not let us down. The next thing I wanna share and putting this into application is if you've experienced that blessing that comes through having a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ, let's praise him for that. When we look at the back part of this Psalm, we see David's words, I praise the Lord who counsels me even at night. And really what David is saying here is that praise, it's, it's a discipline for us in the sense that we're to proclaim the truth to God about who he is and what he's done, but it's, it's more than just a proclamation of what he's done in the sense of acknowledging that truth intellectually. Really, it's a discipline that keeps our hearts on track with actually believing it. He says, God, your word counsels me even, even at night in my heart. It seeps deep into my bones as I, as I pray, as I remember who you are and your spirit comforts me. My friends, it's, it's in these moments that you and I gain clarity on what truly matters. It's in these kind of moments that we see what is ultimately important. This is when God sharpens our perspective on his truth about what he's done for us in Jesus Christ and that he focuses our hope in a direction that will never let us down because the, the truth is that when we have a relationship with God through Jesus, our portion is secure, our cup overflows, the boundary lines have fallen for us in good places. That's our hope in Jesus Christ. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you for this message that your word reminds each and every one of us that through a relationship with Jesus Christ, we all have a blessing in you, a level of blessing, God, that will never diminish, that will never fall short. Father, our security is not in what we can gain for ourselves by our own doing, by our own striving. God, would you help us to be people who, who show our hope to the world by being at peace, by being able to rest in you, knowing that, that you hold our lives in your hands, even when things in our lives might not necessarily reflect the cushion that maybe we're used to in our, in our Western culture. Father, I pray that for anyone who is listening tonight, anyone who is listening in, if this is a moment where you're tugging on their heart, God, to turn to you and to really get real, God, and put their hope in you, to trust in their heart and what Jesus has done on their behalf, Father, I pray that they would join me in these words. God, I turn to you with my need. I know that I am out of luck on my own. I've been trying to live as my own God and I am falling short. I am low on hope. God, I recognize I'm a broken person. My only, my only hope is in your grace. Father, would you meet me with that grace all sufficient? Lord, I know that you hear that prayer. You acknowledge that prayer. And that is the prayer that leads to eternal life and a hope that never runs dry for each and every one of us who looks to you. Father, for those of us who do know you as our Lord and Savior, I pray that you would remind us continually of the blessings that belong to us in Jesus Christ would we know that your grace will never run out, that we are secure in you? What a hope we have found. Father, would you use us as, as ambassadors of your grace, the peace that is found in Jesus in our world in this time? Would you provide all that we need through your Holy Spirit? We ask this together in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, just a reminder, if you would like prayer, any member of our ministry team is happy to pray for you, to support you in any way that we can right now. Go in peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.